Life is an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. We're back for another episode of Go For Your Life. And I'm super excited because I have Vanessa here um, we're from, from New Jersey. I'm saying it right, right? New York? Yes. New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Connection from Amsterdam to New Jersey today with Vanessa Van, Van Noy. Yes, which is actually a Dutch name. I just wanted to say, that was my first question. Like, I think it is because the first time I saw you like, uh, like appearing on Instagram, I was like, that's probably a Dutch name. Yes, I am not Dutch though. I'm actually Spanish. Oh, wow. Because yeah. what? So t- tell us a little bit about uh, Vanessa Vanoy. So you, um, you, what, wh- wh- where are you from? Where are you now? Um, I'm from Jersey, right outside Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born right outside New York City, um, and I've lived in that area most of my life, if not all of my life. Mm. Um, but right now, I live on the beach in New Jersey, um, close enough to the city that I could see it from my bedroom. Yeah, and, so, and, and you see the ocean. Uh, you, I just, you just showed, I showed us uh, your ocean view. That's so yes. epic. That is amazing. What a beautiful... So you get yeah. the city and you get the ocean. I do. It's perfect. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And so I, so I know... I mean, I've, I've been your uh, Instagram, Instagram stalker for a while. Uh, <laughs> I like to say like we're Instagram friends. I'm not just, I'm not just a stalker. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and I mean, you've been such an inspiration. Like I, I feel like when I, you know, it's so, it's so nice when you're, when you can make these kind of connections with people, because what you're writing, especially in most of your posts, I'm just like, oh my God, I just was feeling that today. Or, you know, like you just have this kind of, uh, I resonate with, with you so much, but I don't know you. So it's super nice to have this, um, chat and to share it with, uh, with the rest of the world. Um, because you, uh, you've been teaching yoga for 20 years uh, uh, about that, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. How I'm did, uh, honest, how yeah. did yoga get into your life? What happened uh, on your journey? How did it happen? Um, it's funny. Um, circling back to I'm not Dutch. So my, uh, <laughs> ex-husband, that's his name, Van Noy, my maiden name is Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm Spanish. Um, so I was working when I got, I went to art school, uh, for painting and I got out of school and I was just like, you know, making money in bars and restaurants, working until four o'clock in the morning, (laughs) coming home drunk, you know, just basically having a good time, you know (laughs) what I mean? Having a good time, making a lot of money, you know, really was a concern of myself with like what came next in my life really. And, um, I met my, my husband and he had a very successful job, um, in Manhattan. And, you know, at some point we moved in together and, you know, to make a long story short, eventually he was just like, look, I don't really, I don't like you coming home at four o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Um, you know, I can pay the rent. Why don't you just do something else? You know? So at the time, like I had never even stepped foot into a yoga studio. Like I had never, I've never even been to one. I had Brian Kest's power yoga videos on VHS <laughs> that I, yes, that I was doing like alone hiding, like in my living room. And it was hard. It was really hard. Like I thought at the time, like I thought I was just like fit ish. You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. just like, I'm, I'm I, I, you know, I hear about this yoga stuff. I'm going to do power yoga. So I got the, I got the videos, the, the power yoga videos and I did like 15 minutes and then I died. I was just like, what is this? You know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, this stuff is good. You know? So I, I, I was doing like, I was doing it on video once in a while at the house. Like I honestly have no idea like why he thought to say, why don't you do something with yoga? That's, you seem to like that. Like I, probably would have never even thought of it Mm -hmm. I was just like huh I was just like yeah maybe so like I said we were living where were we living we were living in Edgewater which is basically on the Hudson facing Manhattan so I was like let me you know let me see if there's teacher trainings in New York City at the time 20 years ago I found three (laughs) there was there was three and you know like how many there are now you know yeah and Jiva Mukti wasn't even one of them. And I'm sure that they were around at the time, but they mm-hmm. had, they didn't pop up for me. So um, otherwise I probably would have went in that direction. But um, I went to three studios. It was like Yoga Works. 
the Himalayan Institute and this other place called Atmananda. And it was like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you know, like I went, to, I went to Yoga Works and I was like, this is kind of corporate, you know, and then I went to the, to the Himalayan Institute and I was like, this is kind of Harry Krishna. And then I went to like, and then I went to, you know, the, I went to Avananda, which is just this beautiful, big loft space in Soho. Like it, it looked like uh, anthropology threw up a yoga studio. <laughs> So it was like right up my alley. I was just like, this is fantastic. They had like a kitchen and everything. And I was just like, this is nice. And the the training was starting the next day. Mm. So basically wow. I like gave the due to check and I came back the next day. And that was the first time I ever even stepped foot in a yoga studio was when I started my teacher training. Wow. That's an amazing what an amazing story. And and so yeah. so you really was you just came off the back, first thing ever. And and do you feel like, was it a very intense experience for you, the teacher training at the time? Um, intense? No. I don't think, I, I wouldn't say intense. I have taken, like, Anna Farr's teacher training mm. is, in, is intense. Mm. Mm. Um, that would, that would I would call intense. Um, you know, in retrospect, you know, those of us that have been teaching for a while, it's, you know, we think of the, the 200 hour trainings as like, it's a, it's a drop in the bucket. You know, it's, there's just so much information that I think that we should cultivate as teachers before we step out in front of the room and the 200 hours, even at that time, um, didn't seem like I was getting all the information that I thought I needed. So I was like this crazy person, like, researching extra things and like handing out sheets. I was like, Ooh, I learned this about this. I'm like, hand to the 30 people in the class. I'm like, Oh, look what I found. Like handing out sheets to everyone, you know? Mm. Um, but you know, I think at that time I'm trying to remember the only, the only part of it that I felt was like physically intense. It was probably the first experience that I had of any kind of regimented, physical activity in my life. Like I was never sporty. Like mm. I was never really physically active. Like I was kind of a couch potato. Yeah. You know, like even, even as a kid. So my yoga teacher training was probably, like I said, the first, you know, physical experience that was that regimented for me. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, that's Which really was a good experience. Yeah. And so, so now all these years later, um, you, you are like a full-time yoga teacher. Like that's what you do for, all I do. that's all you do. And do you still, do you still work with art? Like, as you were saying, you were painting when you were younger uh, and stuff. Is that, okay, here's one of my paintings there. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. It's super cool. Thank you. So you are still so, painting. <laughs> that, uh, this, that one was done very, very long time ago. Actually, okay. I'm not. I have like okay. I have an extra bedroom upstairs, so I have two bedrooms. I have a bedroom for you when you come and stay. Yes. <laughs> Go away. You won't have to sleep on the couch covered by dogs. Not that you would. Mind well, that, I, I but, just I would say I really wouldn't yeah, mind. Not, yeah. Nothing would mind. <laughs> um, but I have like an easel up there set up hmm. with like a primed canvas, and it's been sitting there. <laughs> It's been sitting there for years. Like I, I go in there and I like practice or I work out or whatever I'm doing in there, you know, and I look at it and I'm like, I just, I yeah. haven't been, I haven't been inspired to do it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they say I have, I have a, a student and a friend who's, she's an artist. Like that's what she does for a living. That's her job. Like mm -hmm. she paints full time. Then I'm always asking her and I'm just, she's like, when are you going to start painting? And Vanessa, she's just like, what are you doing? You know, and she's just like, you just have to do it every day. You have to schedule it in. This is like a meditation practice. Like you need to schedule it in and be like between two and three every day. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to paint something. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it hasn't happened yet. No, <laughs> but I think that's also, that's also a very different way of looking at it as well. I mean, I'm not an artist myself, but I definitely know a lot of artists who also, I feel like they just kind of get like at three o'clock at night, they're like, oh, I'm going to paint now because they have this, you know, they have this moment of like inspiration and But it's an interesting way of looking at it, of like actually really looking at it as a yoga practice as well, just doing it daily or, you know, getting out there and like doing something to actually, it's yeah. really interesting. It's very different. But, but yeah, I, 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 I feel, I feel you with uh, like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then it's just, yeah, it's there though. Yeah. It's there. It's there when you're, when you're ready, it's there. 
<laughs> for yeah, you. It's, for it's, you. Not, it's not when I'm 90 years old that it's something that I'll have to worry not being able to do. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like one of those things. And I, yeah. and I feel, I feel in the, in the past couple of years, <clears throat> my creativity avenue has been writing. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. You know, I feel like I feel like I'm I'm at least feeding that creative bug somehow, even if it's not painting per se. Yeah, and you do that really, really well. I mean, I love your posts are always so they're so insightful and and beautiful and read, you know, also when you're reading it and also you can just see that it was really written from the heart, you know, and someone with a lot of experience. It's just really nice. And I think I think it's uplifting a lot of people like with um because you're pretty much do you do you have a, a post daily or is no, that especially, especially not now like mm. I remember you know I am honestly even though I'm on social media I am not a fan of social media mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like I, Good point. I, I, I appreciate what it can do like it brought us together it's, mm. it's brought it's brought me together with with many people you know and for that I'm very grateful and I think it's wonderful but I think on the other end of it, it's causing a lot of problems emotionally with people, Absolutely. you know, like, like, especially like teenagers, like dealing with, with, you know, self-esteem and like all this stuff. And, you know, these 13 year old girls, you know, they don't want to be doctors anymore. They want to be vloggers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so when I first got on, you know, when Facebook first came out, I was married, you know, and my, one of my girlfriends in the city was like, oh, you should get on Facebook and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, no, like I, I really did. I didn't need any of that. Like I really didn't need to network. I lived in a tiny town upstate at the time. Like I taught a couple classes. It wasn't like, it wasn't a thing that I was concerned about, you know, as far as like, you know, getting my name out there, getting mm-hmm. my voice out there. It wasn't on the list for Vanessa to do at that point. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, she ground me down and I was, uh, and I was just, and I looked at it and I was just like, Oh, you know, maybe whatever. So I got on Facebook like dribs and drabs and then, you know, things with me and my husband kind of went sideways. Uh, and you know, I had to think about like, how am I going to, you know, get back out there. Like I had, I moved back to Jersey and I started teaching more and I, and I realized that it was really kind of like a platform for many things, not Mm -hmm. only, you know, to say, you know, I'm teaching here at this time, but also if, if you have a message that you feel is important, it's a way for you to get that out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, So I started posting, I tried to post fairly regularly, but it's kind of exhausting, you know, (laughs) and especially like a woman my age at this point, like it's, it got to, it got to a point where I was just sick of having a camera in my face. You yeah. know, I'm just like, I don't want to have to look cute every day if I don't want to like, you know, like you, like I don't get up and put makeup on. Like yeah. I, the only time I wear makeup is if I'm like going to a wedding or something or mm-hmm. out to dinner or something like nice. Like yeah. I basically roll out of, roll out my pajamas and go to yoga and come home and walk my dogs. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the extent of me changing my outfit is changing my shoes to go hike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's pretty much it. And it just got to be a lot for me. And I, and I found myself becoming more judgmental of myself and others, the Mm -hmm. more I looked, the more I looked at it. So, um, at this point, you know, if I put, and even like with now, like I, I'm sure there's many, many, if not most people are on social media and other, you know, video type avenues so much more because we're locked in our houses. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually went the other way. I actually, yeah. I saw the post about that. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on, I've been on it less. You yeah, know, like if I post, I, I try to make sure I post at least like once a week. Yeah. Um, if I feel the urge about something, you know, I'll do that in the moment. But no, I, I really, I really, fun. you you have a really important point there. I, I totally agree with you because sometimes you're also just like, you know, you can see that, you know, it is also having a, a negative effect on people, of course, you know, and it's, I, I think what you do and I try to do it as well is like, use it as you know as a platform for positive change as well you know like because you are influencing other people you are inspiring other people and 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 to use your voice right